Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Bienvenue. I'm supposed to start this panel in French, so bienvenue uh, to, to Samarkand for this uh, SQV partner event, which I am uh, very privileged to, uh, to moderate uh, together with uh, uh, my, uh, my fellow uh, panelists. Bank privatization in, uh, um, in, in Uzbekistan uh, is a key topic. Uh, before I introduce the panelists, I would like to give uh, uh, the, the word to uh, the Deputy Chairman of the Board of, uh, of SQB, uh, which uh, will have some uh, welcome remarks. But before I do that, uh, there's a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we will have translation. Uh, we c you can listen to us in the original. Uh, if we don't speak loud enough, it will be in the headphones. Uh, you can listen to us in English on channel one and, <coughs> in, one Russian. and in Russian. Canal dva. Canal dva. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, the other, and uh, the other uh, piece of uh, there's no French uh, translation. No French I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, we will organize uh, someday. We will organize uh, someday. Uh, but uh, um, but uh, the other thing uh, that I'd like, thing I'd like, like to, to uh, say, to, uh, to say uh, we will have uh, Q and A. We will have Q and A. And for that we use an app. It's a cool thing to do. We use Slido. Which you can join at uh, slido.com. Either you download the app or you just uh, uh, connect on, on the internet, and uh, you use the code that is now on the uh, on the screen, a three four nine four four nine, and then you choose the transformation of Uzbek banks and their preparation for the privatization process. That's the full mouthful title of our panel. Full title of you our can panel. Post your question you can post your question there. I will, there. Uh, I get, will the, uh, get the get questions, the, uh, get the questions and, and play and them, and play uh, them uh, as, uh, as, as we near, um, the, as end we near the end of our panel. Uh, so over uh, to you, so, uh, Mr. Deputy Chairman, for your opening remarks. You get the chance to speak also later. So you know, over to you for the, for the opening remarks. And then we will take the panelists with a short set of remarks, and uh, then I'll ask each of the panelists to comment on each other to make this into more of a lively conversation. Over to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Malic, for the opportunity to speak to the speaker. Dear members of the forum, dear guests, ladies and Я искренне приветствую вас всех на гостеприимной земле Самарканда, и мне доставляет особое большое удовольствие видеть вас всех на сегодняшнем форуме. Как мы все понимаем и знаем, правительством Узбекистана сегодня принята стратегия реформирования банковской системы страны, в которой определены основные задачи по улучшению корпоративного управления банков, системы риск-менеджмента банков, оптимизации и цифровизации всех бизнес-процентов узбекских банков. В этой связи проведение панельной сессии на тему трансформации узбекских банков и их приватизация полностью э, характеризует стремление э, нашего э, государства и является сегодня наиболее актуальным на э, сегодняшний день темой для э, обсуждения на э, полях э, нашего основного мероприятия. И пользуясь данной возможностью, я бы хотел кратко обозначить э, направление, по которым, э, я думаю, мои коллеги представят свои э, презентации, и э, в том числе и моя презентация будет э, основываться на этой тем, тематике. И э, темы, по, по которым, я думаю, э, нам важно сегодня скоординировать и наладить э, совместную работу. Первое направление, как мы понимаем, это трансформация узбекских банков в тесном сотрудничестве с международными финансовыми институтами. Эти процессы начались не сегодня, не вчера, это уже есть практический опыт и результаты проделанных, уже проведенных и осуществленных этапов этой работы, и на эту тему, я думаю, можно будет обсудить и поговорить. И второе направление, естественно, это мы ощущаем это и как второй этап, это уже привлечение наиболее авторитетных и качественных акционеров в процессах приватизации узбекских банков. И мы понимаем, что 
от имиджа и авторитета, будем говорить, владельца банка, зависит его стоимость. Это, естественно, очень важно для будущих потенциальных акционеров банка. И, естественно, не могу не затронуть очень важную тематику. Это мне было бы, я думаю, и всем нам было бы очень приятно услышать мнение наших спикеров касательно развития зеленых стандартов в банковской системе нашей страны. И в этой связи то также хотелось бы отметить, что когда мы начинали еще в 2017 году процессы и планы по трансформации банка, и тогда, когда мы общались с нашими консультантами, встал вопрос, а каким мы видим промстройбанк, промстройбанк в будущем после трансформации. Тогда еще, уже тогда мы были... Ну, Одним из крупнейших банков занимали вторую позицию, естественно, крупнейший промышленный, индустриальный банк. И уже тогда было очень амбициозным так сказать, заявлением, что Промстройбанк, несмотря на свою достаточно тесную связанность с промышленностью, с индустриализацией, это как раз те производства, которые максимально влияют на окружающую среду. И очень было амбициозным наше стремление и заявление о том, что Промстройбанк будет первым зеленым банком в Узбекистане. Поэтому это направление для нас очень важно, и сегодня мы очень много сделали в этой связи и активно используем для своих клиентов механизмы зеленого финансирования. Уважаемые участники форума, хотелось бы выступление свое краткое закончить фразой нашего выдающегося среднеазиатского, среднеазиатского математика и астронома Шамсуддина Аль-Саварканди.
опыт это был достаточно высокий, тут крупный наш банк может это подтвердить, но вот именно создание продуктов, доступных для населения, когда уже каждый может это воспользоваться, если у него есть свои финансовые возможности, потенциал для реализации своих целей это в малом бизнесе и, и населения. Вот очередным нашим шагом в, в этом направлении являются сейчас уже кредиты для населения, не имеющие официальные подтверждения доходов. Банки уже научились это, создавать такие продукты. Сначала были лидеры в этом направлении бизнеса, а теперь уже это поэтапно масштабируется. Из микро наших займов переходят уже на более крупные это и автокредиты и, соответственно, ипотечные кредитования. Опять-таки, Промспробанк там тоже является э, лидером в этом направлении. Недавно они это объявили, что они готовы населению выдавать кредиты, не имеющие подтверждения доходов. Второй части, я еще хотел бы подтвердить, было сказано о зеленом финансировании. Зеленое финансирование также является и для Центрального банка приоритетным. У нас уже есть первые шаги, когда э, мы дали послаблению э, пронунциальных наших требований при выдаче населению, по, э, при установке э, э, альтернативных источников э, энергии технологии, при установке таких технологий. Ну, думаю, мы будем теперь это будем масштабировать и еще развивать. Большое спасибо. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this lesson in uh, learning to do central banking in a new way. And uh, I was very happy to uh, be in your premises to, for a, a green uh, seminar with uh, some of your banks just a few, a few months ago. So that's also an area where we cooperate. Now, Uh, SQB, uh, sometimes we say from Stroy, but I think it's the old name, right? So we also, we also should say SQB. Uh, are you ready? В этой связи хотелось бы сказать, знаете, вот то, что сейчас Центральный банк как раз говорил, все, что происходит сейчас, процессы трансформации, вот если посмотреть, э, во главу угла стал такой важный момент, э, принцип, экономические принципы, да, э, диверсификация. Мы сегодня говорим о трансформации, мы, э, как вы уже начали говорить об этом, исторический банк, который назывался когда-то Промстройбанк, это э, еще с... с, с мы отметили в прошлом году столетний юбилей. Это очень большая история. И, естественно, строительный банк, промышленный банк, как только мы в этот исторический период не назывались, но традиционно мы были банком, который обслуживает мощные индустриальные, крупные промышленные предприятия. И, естественно, у нас и активы были соответствующие. У нас доля крупных государственных промышленных предприятий в клиентской базе и э, в кредитном портфеле была соответствующим образом более э, 60-70%. Естественно, процессы трансформации ну, э, в хорошем смысле вынудили нас меняться, вынудили нас э, выживать, и не только выживать, и занимать определенные лидирующие позиции в среде конкурентной, которую вот сейчас уже мы говорим и находимся в ситуации, когда доля частных банков, доля средних частных банков, она увеличивается в общей банковской системе. Естественно, Узбекистан сегодня с, с такими темпами экономического развития, тогда очень активно развивается частный бизнес процессы приватизации, вот Абдулаке сказал, уже и тут, не только в банковском секторе, но и в целом в экономике. Поэтому государство потихонечку, потихонечку, оно уходит из экономики, уходит из крупных 
и средних предприятий, да, отдает это все в частные бунки, в частные руки, и частный инвестор, частный владелец, естественно, в первую очередь думает о развитии своей компании, своего бизнеса. И это приводит к тому, что возникает очень жесткая конкурентная среда. Это то, что должно быть, это основной принцип развития рыночной экономики, и в этой среде мы должны и вынуждены работать. Естественно, сегодня, спасибо, коллега отметил, мы достигли определенных результатов. Мы трансформировались из крупного вот этого промышленного монстра, будем так говорить, да, в очень гибкий, активный и очень диверсифицированный банк. Мы сегодня уже занимаем определенные важные и не последние позиции в таких направлениях, как розничный бизнес, малый и средний бизнес. Спасибо. Именно в рознице у нас одно из наилучших приложений мобильных Masterplay. Это Joy, да, я можно прорекламирую, называется наше приложение. Поэтому оно реально, активно и очень эффективно сегодня работает и оказывает услуги нашим клиентам. Поэтому в этом плане диверсификация очень важна. И то, что мы сегодня говорим, мы в конечном итоге пришли к этому. Диверсификация продуктов, диверсификация портфеля, диверсификация клиентской базы. И, конечно, в будущем эти процессы будут углубляться и я думаю, не только Промстройбанк, но и все наши коллеги, другие банки, которые сегодня стоят на пути трансформации, пройдут через эту диверсификацию, через конкурентную среду и станут более универсальными и более широкую линейку продуктов смогут оказывать своим клиентам. Спасибо. If an investor would be interested in the financial market of Uzbekistan, what kind of questions he will be raising? The first is sustainability of the business. The second is the size of the business. Uh, concerning the size, then we have to tell you that the, as a result of 2022, the, the total the loans provided by the banks has increased for $18 billion equivalent. Then the remaining size of the loans portfolio makes uh, about 34 billion. Not a big size, mm -hmm. to be honest. But there, is a, there are many other sides of the business. Say that the, the price of the money in Uzbekistan is too high. The rates in the lo local currency is about 23, 24%. It's kind of a rate which is not allowing you to make an investments, to, to do the, the long-term uh, forecasting for your business, etc. So we have to think about it. What, what cause these kind of rates? What is uh, the main drivers of the, such a price of the money? Mm -hmm. And one of the drivers well might be that for, the, for such a tiny of, uh, of the size of the economy of Uzbekistan, uh, which is about uh, 100 billion uh, US dollar equivalent, we were implementing the Basel III requirements for the banking sector. Why? And this is a very, very fundamental question. Is that the something which is necessarily to do having the size and shape of the economy as such. It's a very fundamental question. And that, and, uh, another uh, thing is we, which as a, as a shareholder we are facing is, is that uh, the, from the one hand side the uh, banking activity is over-regulated. And you may see that in the, uh, some, uh, loan port in, the, in the shares of loan port, the directed loans are high. The level of directed loans are high. And we have to face and tackle this problem as well. And uh, also, uh, the central bank is playing now the role of, instead of just regulating, being neutral, they are playing some active role in the market. They are providing deposits, short-term deposits. They are providing the, 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 the securities in the market. So they are trying to absorb uh, exceeding liquidity in the market in the many, many manners. Is that the role they have to do now? Uh, if we see that, uh, of course, there is a, t a big task to target the inflation. Okay, the targeting inflation it mean, has the meaning when you have the main source of inflation on the monetary policy. But if the, there is no monetary uh, issues on the inflation as such, uh, because the, the energy prices are going up, 
food prices are going up, logistics are get, getting uh, more harder and more uh, expensive, then you are importing mainly the inflation. Then what is the role of monetary policy and at what, to, what, to what extent should be the role of monetary policy? Uh, so, and from the other side, we are also seeing that the banking sector is not enough regulated. Uh, let's talk about digital banking. Let's talk about fintech. Then there is no law about that. There is no such a framework, legislative framework, which says that is uh, kind of prevailing policy. That's going to be our aim, and that is going to be I intensified by the government, supported by the government, etc. And this is prohibited, which is this one is allowed. The fintech is going to be something which we will be speaking uh, throughout 50 years from now. The fintech is something which may bring to the uh, question of the frauds, financial frauds, uh, the, to the question of the prosperity and access of the poor population to the, uh, the financial technologies. Uh, as one French uh, friend of mine, banker, was saying that uh, poor, poor people doesn't have much money, but there are too many. So, so you, can, you can grab that money anyway. <laughs> so uh, when you are talking about microcredits, then it's, it's about that. But here you have to offer something which is very accessible, easy to access, uh, and uh, as is only fintech. So all in all, I'm trying to say that as a shareholder, we are facing a lot of challenges from both sides, regulatory and the, from the market size. So we'll try to address that. Thank you. It's, it's welcome to have a, a debate uh, where we can have the central bank and uh, the state uh, arguing about whether banking is over-regulated or under-regulated or at the same time both. Um, yeah. But uh, um, maybe before we settle that, because it's a long-running debate. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, unless you want to come in, uh, I would like to, uh, to move to Momina and ask you, in this con in this process. Uh, you now, we together have been working uh, with uh, SQB uh, for uh, quite a few years. Mm -hmm. uh, you've also uh, been very successful at bringing Hypotheca Bank to privatization uh, just uh, recently, so congratulations. So what's your, how do you assess the process with, uh, with SQB? And uh, how does it compare maybe to other uh, privatizations you've run in this country and in other countries? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Francis. Salam alaikum. It's, uh, we have you and EBRD to thank for being here today. And actually, it was interesting hearing about you know, how one has to be friends in this context. So we are very blessed because we have these very strong relationships with EBRD, with ADB, with the regulators, as well as the partners that we have on the ground. Um, personally, uh, this is my first time in Samarkand, and I grew up listening to that my ancestors came from here. So it's like coming full circle to be able to work with, uh, with SQV and Ipoteca and some of the other institutions that we are. So just broadly, I mean, I wanted to pick up and maybe build on the points that the, you know, the other panelists have made. I think privatization uh, these days is not an easy feat, uh, as you said. You know, it's almost like uh, financial services these days is, uh, involves a lot of transition, um, not just from the state-owned to private but also that you're working in almost like a, you know, it's like playing chess in a three-dimensional space. Uh, there are all these global changes which are happening, um, you know, whether it's, you know, the effects of digitalization in the U.S., um, the transformation of banks in Europe and, uh, and the U.S. moving to a more digital space, the increasing digitalization of consumers on the ground, particularly young consumers, the pace of reforms, uh, the market changing, as you know, as uh, as others have mentioned, um, the market itself is changing quite dram dramatically, right? From large industrial uh, lending to uh, more retail, and you know, what does one do to bring uh, access of uh, to finance for entrepreneurs who are in Uzbekistan, as well as then the institution itself. So, I think part of the the biggest challenge is, is how do you build or transition some of these large entities into banks of tomorrow. Uh, right, which involves a certain level of in innovation, institution building, um, as well as a change in governance. So, I mean, you know, f from, from IFC's perspective, we've been very holistically working under this World Bank Group, uh, you know, reform process and supporting the government's efforts in that. Um, and part of the building blocks that, w there's a very uh, lovely Chinese quote by this philosopher, um, Lao Chu, who said that, you know, uh, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. 
So we've been really focused on the steps. What does one need? I mean, part of it is the ESG on, on the governance, part of it is on the, um, the governance at the board, like bringing in you know, the institution independent board members. Part of it is the transformation to you know, like products of tomorrow. Um, and that includes obviously green banking. And I'm really pleased that our partnership with SQB has resulted in a 250 million loan book in the green space, right? And that will hopefully differentiate them from some of the other banks um, in this space. As well as on the investment side. So funding has to be obviously a very large percentage. Like, uh, uh, privatized, uh, I mean, state-owned banks have traditionally been reliant both on the asset and liability side on, uh, you know, directed or state lending and then uh, state deposits so larger companies deposit with them. As you transition into a more privatized environment, that composition is likely to change as well. So mm -hmm. we've been supporting, obviously, with, you know, uh, like a 75 million loan focused on climate financing, but we're also helping the bank transition with a upcoming euro bond syndication to really change the composition of some of the funders coming in. And hopefully that should result in mobilizing other investors, whether in the region or globally, but also local investors, right, who see this as a more attractive asset. I think my, uh, on the, I wanted to just pause on the governance aspect because I think mm. that is really key. Um, I mean, there's a, again, uh, th there is an element of governance which requires immense change management, both at the board and, and, and the management level. And I mean, I've spent a lot of the last five, seven years working on China on privatization of like some of their larger state-owned banks entity, the last wave of privatization. And, that was a sticky point in many mm. of the privatizations that we've seen. How do you successfully manage change when there are vested interests? The, you know, the current system works for, um, you know, and all of us get comfortable with the current system. So how do you shake that up, particularly when the external environment is also being disrupted? Um, and I think that, that aspect we've been focused very much on not only the you know, the, the architecture of governance, but also the incentive alignment, right, for management, for governance, more of the private sector uh, incentives that will incentivize the bank management, et cetera, to really move in that direction. Uh, that is, I think, the hardest process when one privatizes banks because the, the change management aspect, whether in Uzbekistan or China or Africa or even in Europe and the US is not easy to do, particularly for institutions where the current skill set may be very experienced in banking or risk management or even, you know, like the traditional old style governance, but may not be equipped, uh, you know, um, to see what the risks are with climate change or to see what, the, you know, some of the newer issues coming on on the digitalization front. And so I think, you know, a lot of our focus has been really to see, like, how do you build effectively for what tomorrow's financial services will look like. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. At the same time, if I may, uh, and that's not to, uh, to take away from the achievements of SQB, uh, the uh, work is needed on the, uh, on the transformation as well on the banking skills, uh, meaning, yes. uh, you know, so f ending, uh, directed lending, yes. and, and, and this, you know, what we call telephone banking, right? Yes. When the government officials calls and, and say, mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> I, I need this to be financed. Uh, and, and uh, you know, th th that's, it'll I think. Require it'll require a huge change in mindset, I think, not only from the government, but the bank management, as well as the changing consumer. I mean, I, I last, the first time I came to Uzbekistan, I paid my hotel bill in like mountains of cash. Mm -hmm. Now you don't even need cash to operate within Uzbekistan. Consumers are changing quite dramatically mm -hmm. and particularly the young, amongst the young who are using all of these apps uh, and hopefully your app and the many services. So I think that transition will is necessitated. Mm -hmm. It's how, d how well prepared are you to, to deal with it? And indeed, I mean, there was a, um, a panel just before on the capital market, yes, exactly. wh which said uh, yes. some, some, some very good remarks about the accepting independence, you know, and uh, the notion that uh, you hire an independent board member, and that means actually they don't have to do what you tell them to do. <laughs> now, how do you see this from the ADB standpoint? You are also involved in the uh, SQB uh, privatization. Uh, with us, we count on you uh, 
joining the joining the ship of the convertible debt as soon as you possibly can. So, Enrico, over to you. How, what's your take on this? Well, first of all, um, it's really remarkable that um, this is one of the few, uh, not few, but there's more, but one of the projects we're really uh, working together, aligned, coordinating, uh, as I said, using, paraphrasing, really among friends, uh, has been, we've been part of many things uh, in the country, but uh, on the banking sector reform, it's really, uh, sorry, but it's really humongous task, so we need to be together on this. Uh, so my, uh, I'd like to take on, take on some of the Mominia comment, in especially, um, uh, you know, SQB is a systemically important bank. It's very big. Uh, and because of that, and a lot of the banking system, you give the statistics of the public bank before, uh, uh, why are we doing this? Uh, we're doing this really because uh, it has been a burden uh, on the budget. Uh, it has been a burden because it's not necessarily been so far uh, it's getting better, but uh, um, being managed on a, on a more commercial basis. And the idea is to the transformation to bring these banks, especially SQB, on being uh, profitable, being self-sustaining, and really free up the money for the government to pursue other things that they have in their strategic agenda. Uh, health investment, education investment, you know, you see every forum that we are, you know, the growth in population, the demographics, the demand for services. Yeah, so, yeah, so really, uh, th this is one uh, why are we are pursuing the transformation proposition, really to, uh, you know, help the government sustaining the social agenda, which is really uh, a key pillar on, on, the, on, the, on the strategy. Now, um, as, uh, so the way uh, as uh, development banks, especially ADB, I, I can speak on behalf of my institution, we really look at this uh, as, a, as a, a, com a complete set of solutions. Uh, you know, I hate to use our jargon, but it's really the upstream work, which we like to use this work, um, where we work on, 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 the, on this, uh, on this uh, you know, regulatory framework, uh, creating the environment, uh, creating the uh, this transformation tools, uh, the financial reporting, uh, the corporate governance, everybody speaks about it. Uh, so really, uh, you know, as, as we were on the, uh, on the, on the capital market before, uh, the investor says, the first thing we look at is, is there transparency? Is there transparency? So this is really, ha this is one of the things you want to do on a systemic basis because, uh, of course, the client is SQB, but also the whole system as it migrates to international financial uh, reporting standards will actually benefit from being able to be visible for the investors and the investor will be trustworthy uh, of, this, uh, of, of investing in this company. Of course then, you know, we also go midstream and downstream. We, we do the analysis, we do the senior convertible loan, hopefully we'll join the club very soon. Uh, so we're, we're on this boat together. So really uh, what I'm trying to give you uh, a little bit of an impression. This is not just a one bank privatization. This is a systemic reform that has to come from the upstream all the way down to uh, our work with the particular institutions. Uh, then uh, I wanted to, you know, I took a little bit of cheat sheet today, but um, I wanted to also, given the ADB has a large geography as well and a lot of also in, in Asia, we have done this type of work in in uh, Vietnam, Indonesia, Mongolia, all over. So I, I kind of found like, you know, four common points, success points that I think are applicable in this case. So the first one I wanted to mention is the political commitment. And this is really uh, what underpins accountability. Um, so uh, the fact that the, there's this government reform, commitment to reform, but also the empowerment, uh, Abdullah Khan, they gave it to your agency now, uh, is really, uh, you're driving this process, so now there is an accountability. You know, we know who to go to. Mashallah. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one that I, I, I'm pretty impressed because uh, is the fact that we have uh, developed, you have developed a, transf a transformation plan and you're bound to stick to it. And what is really impressive is the fact that it actually is in a presidential decree. Uh, this is not every day that it happens. And this really gives that authority or that are comfortable the, the seriousness of, of this endeavor. Um, and then um, the other, I'm, I'm, this, I'm gonna go upstream a little bit again, but I think uh, uh, the fact that you're engaged in systemic reform is really, uh, 
a good signal that you're trying to open up competition and level in the playing field, uh, especially because you have such a heavy hand, uh, state hand in the in, in the in the ownership of these banks. Um, and then the last point, I think I'm I'm, I'm pushing a, a, an open door now on the corporate governance. I think everybody on this panel already mentioned. But what does it really mean uh, in practice? So a few examples. You know, one we have uh, you know the independent board of directors, but that includes also an independent chairperson. That independent mm -hmm. that also an independent risk function. Uh, an independent uh, and knowledgeable CRO management team. So it's not, you know, just uh, just numbers. It's really the quality of the people that are that are uh, running the bank, the institution, the shop. So these are the four kind of common items that I, you know, quickly screening to all our other engagements around the world. I think those are success factors. And when you bring it here to the contest, you are, you are, you, you're hitting some of the key points. Uh, the agency the decree and so on. So you're on the right track. And I think that, that we're here to support you all together with the friends. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well said, Enrico. And uh, uh, colleagues, I would suggest, uh, unless someone wants to, to jump in, but that we move to the question and answers. We have about uh, mm -hmm. 12, uh, 13 minutes left in our, in our panel. Um, I have a few questions here on the, on the Slido, uh, but uh, is there a question in the room to begin with? There's a, there's a question there. Oh, uh, one yeah. here and one there. Can we please have uh, microphones? There you go. Who runs faster gets the first question. <laughs> okay, there you go. Can you yes. please introduce good yourself? Good. And uh, yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much, first of all, for this fantastic information. It was very useful for Uzbekistan. Let me introduce myself. My name is Rakim Hakimov. Uh, we are doing environmental, health and safety, social projects in Uzbekistan, mainly we work with EBRD and projects as ADB and, and IFC. Especially we're doing projects in SQB and Asaka Bank now in Uzbekistan. So there is a following question. Are IFIs in Uzbekistan are planning to expand their activity uh, with other banks of Uzbekistan on, or they just want to stay with <laughs> SQB and Asaka Bank? Thank you very much. Do you want to take this one? Is I mean, that a business know. development question? Yeah, <laughs> I I, it is yeah. probably, but you know, I mean, we, we work with a, maybe <laughs> half a dozen that, that, like uh, eight as banks as in Azibiadi, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. sure you work with yeah, many as well. Right? Yeah, because this, um, uh, Mr. Pinelli said that it's not just a privatization, it's a yes. reform. Yes. So, yes. so it means it's a banking reform which leads to development, the uh, financial system of the whole country itself. So that's why are they are planning to. Yeah. Make it all reforms in Uzbekistan. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, Bomina first, okay. then Enrico, and I'll say a few words yeah. as well. Thank you for your question. I think, I mean, you know, environmental and social governance is now just more than just compliance, right? It's, uh, it's very much the bedrock of banks uh, globally. So, mo most of the work that we'll be doing with any bank, anywhere th that you go, will have that as, uh, as very much as part and parcel of the investment or the advisory that we do. I'll just cede to uh, yeah. you perhaps on this yeah, one. Since I, I was mentioned, um, I think, uh, and I actually have to quote uh, the good work the World Bank Group uh, did a few years ago. So there's a strategy on banking sector reform. And this banking sector reform outlined which banks are uh, somehow slotted for transformation privatization, some that are, will remain, will remain public sector bank or with public function, with policy function, and some that uh, have potential but need to work a little bit more. Uh, so uh, the the goal is really with this segmentation is tar to target the assistance. So, for instance, we are engaged with other uh, banks that are not slotted for privatization. They have a policy function that will retain it. But of course, uh, as we were chatting, the minister there's a bit of direct lending, and some of it actually brings up some of the the non-performing uh, of these banks. So the idea is, how do you commercialize them? How do you improve it? Because you're not gonna, you don't want, you don't want them to be privatized because they have a social function. But at the same time, you don't want them to uh, waste the capital uh, uh, of the social function in, in projects that are either not effective or not reaching the right customers or just uh, creating NPLs, which is gonna spiral in into more need of public funds. So I really is. The, the ideally, the work is transforming toward commercialization, and those that are actually have uh, that professionality and that ambition to be privatized, uh, to according to the strategy, try to bring those investors, as IFC has successfully done with the with the uh, Ipoteca. Yes. Uh, uh, 
Council. I think we should understand the philosophy of our president when he has decided to move uh, all state-owned banks' shareholder rights uh, to the one agency. Uh, because there was a central bank, there was a, the, some owner of the bank, and there was a state uh, on behalf of the Minister of Finance. But the Minister of Finance had to do a lot of other jobs, and they were not much concentrated on the transforming the banks as one of the assets, biggest assets. So the idea of moving this, those assets to the agency is to perform the reforms, in fact, to d d speed up the process of the transforming. And the, the stakeholding should be in a place, and the stake leading also should be in a place. That's why the philosophy was to move into the agency, which will be more concentrated on that issue, and will be more deeply looking at, in, into the problem, and get, getting into that. And I'm very happy when uh, the EBRD together with IFC were making, uh, participating in the process of transformation of SQB and also as Asaka Bank, and the way how they have done it. They, they were looking into the governance, as you have mentioned, in a way, and then they were looking, which for me it's more important, to the quality of the assets. Mm -hmm. What is the quality of the assets? How become that this assets is not uh, good one is or bad, and what, how to avoid it? The more question is, uh, what, what kind of procedures, what kind of balancing powers should be put within the bank to avoid uh, bad management, to avoid getting in uh, on board uh, the bad assets. That is a key issue. And that's what we will be welcoming all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was thinking just before the session, bravo to both EBRD and IFC's job and all the institutions who were participating in this transaction. And, yes, uh, I, I did, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but answering to a question, uh, the, uh, the, the answer is yes, we'll be moving on with all state-owned banks, with all state-owned assets in general, which is holded by the uh, agency, for yeah. sure. Thank you. And if I just may add, uh, stepping out of my moderator role for a moment, but uh, we do work with many more banks in Uzbekistan. I mean, all of us. I don't know, George, how many banks we work with in this country. Eight? About so? Mm -hmm. Right? And one thing I'd like to say that has not been mentioned, but I'd like to commend the central bank for this, is the opening to competition. Yeah. Because I will not take a judgment as to who has the best uh, app uh, on the market, because all of my clients tell, them they tell me they have the best app. Of course, it's like uh, but Uzbek but <laughs> <laughs> so, but so they're probably all of them on the, top, on the top rank. But one thing I can say, though, is that when a digital bank, which is in the room, actually, uh, came into the market, it actually focused everyone on providing digital services. So well done, Central Bank, for taking the risk of uh, opening the market to new people because competition, ultimately, is the best driver of, uh, of transformation. Uh, we have, uh, Bruno, you asked a question on the Slido, but you're in the room, so why don't you ask it in person? <laughs> <laughs> Behind you. Uh, right here. Yeah. Thank you. It's okay. Thank you, yeah. thank you, thank you, Francis. And thank you all. Um, I, uh, I think I'm going to, to speak, I dare to speak on behalf of a number of independent directors that are in the room. And... Uh <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a battle of independent directors if, here. If you disagree, you <laughs> tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> um, in my particular case, I've been in Asaka Bank, and then I, I took uh, over in, uh, S, uh, in QQB Bank. And what I would like to hear both from the agency and from the central bank is how do you feel about the work we have been doing over the last two and a half years? Just one word, bravo. <laughs> 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 no, I, and the reason I'm asking for this is because I think we are all inspired by the vision of the president and the real transformation that is happening in the country. But the devil is in the detail and we feel, all of us with different backgrounds and skills, we feel we can contribute much more in the transformation of the bank. Mm. So the real question is, what do you expect from us in the future? Okay. Maybe, do you have a, s a similar question? Why don't you step in and then we, we give it back to the panel. Thank you. So my name is Greg Robbins. I'm uh, an independent board member of SQB with my colleague Ferdinand here. Um, firstly, to say thank you, thank you for that question. Uh, we, you did speak for us, it's, it's, <laughs> it's fair. And I would also like to say thank you. It's nice to hear the positive comments about our bank, especially from our central bank. So uh, we have a board meeting tomorrow and we will convey those positive comments uh, at that meeting. 
But what I, what I wanted to say was, you know, there is a lot of positive things happening, for sure. Huh? And just a few observations and a, and a question, really. One is, you know, privatization is, is part of a process. It's not a, an end goal, and then we're done, and everybody goes home and leaves the place, right? So, and it doesn't fix everything. Secondly, you know, on the road to this privatization and what Bruno was saying, we, we struggle with these things. You know, um, firstly, it's not just about governance, it's also people and we're trying to move forward, but there isn't a, an existing business, right? Mm -hmm. So we kind of put on different hats when we look at the business. We look at today's business, we look at the results, we look at the teams we have, then we look at the future, we talk about transformation. So comment number one, you know, Culture and people is a complicated thing. Yeah, can I ask you to try and be a little bit more succinct? Concise. Uh, so because otherwise we won't have time for answers. Sorry, <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right, I apologize. <laughs> the, really the question is, how do you manage the difficult decisions where you're trying to deliver the present and move to the future? That's really the question. Sorry to... Thank you. No, yeah. Yeah, not at all. Who wants to uh, first give a... Give yes, a, 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 a you know, a, a report mark to our board, of, uh, to our yes, board and then uh, the shareholder maybe. Do you want to start? No, Central Bank. Okay, Central Bank, over to you. Касательно деятельности независимых членов, если сказать, с первых дней мы наблюдали, мы присутствовали на онлайн встречах, это могут подтвердить наши независимые члены Советов, и нашей целью, без каких-то комментариев, нас, мы там присутствовали как наблюдатели, что прочувствовать, каким образом осуществляются взаимоотношения, и как налажено все это дело, и э, все-таки какие люди были привлечены в Совет э, Банка. Во-первых, э, большое спасибо всем, кто участвовал в привлечении э, вот, э, каждого из независимых, они самые лучшие профессионалы, но мы это рады. Значит, если взять эволюцию взаимоотношений, в начале банки воспринимали наших независимых членов как привлеченных экспертов. То есть не как высший орган, который стоит, под которым они являются подотчетными, а как больше экспертов. Эта культура, ну, это все-таки необходимо было времени, чтобы сделать совет более эффективным, поскольку предыдущие советы, они действительно были больше, ну не настолько, они меньше участвовали в управлении банка, там роль председателя банка была в основном принять решение. А нынешнее за несколько лет это уже существенно изменилось. Совет полностью поменял корпоративное управление, есть уже существенные сдвиги в том же Промстройбанке, Осака банке, Ипотека банка, где э, Халык банки, где на сегодняшний день достаточно уже э, большое количество независимых членов. У нас есть по нашему законодательству, где требуется, что большинство должно состоять из независимых членов. Они уже есть определенные результаты. Полностью управление рисками. Это и планирование бизнеса, формирование бизнес-модели, обсуждение бизнес планов, в конце концов, кредитной политики. Существенное изменение. Существенно. И как в виде оценки, также наши уважаемые независимые члены могут подтвердить, мы всегда, когда мы первый раз встречаемся, мы говорим, уважаемые независимые члены Совета Банка, по нашему законодательству, при определенных действиях или бездействиях, которым вам возлагается, Центральный банк имеет право штрафовать. Мы это объявляли. Но до сих пор мы этого не применили. И, соответственно, мы не только не применили, мы считаем, что ваша роль на сегодняшней части формирования управления риском достаточно высокая. И мы благодарим за это. Реплику можно будет? Да. Алло? Меня слышно? Do you want to... Да. Я просто хотел бы поделиться своими впечатлениями, как непосредственно на практике почувствовавший руководитель и член правления, что поменялось в банке с приходом в банк независимых членов. Да? Ну, 
проработал достаточно много времени, достаточно большой стаж имею, в том числе и как член правления банка. Поэтому правильно сейчас коллега говорит, та система, которая ранее функционировала в банках и как таковой орган управления наблюдательный совет банка, он был, функционировал, но насколько, вопрос ведь, насколько эффективно он выполнял свою миссию, свою функцию. Да? Сегодня, когда мы имеем дело с реализацией на практике первого этапа трансформации, да, это мы, спасибо нашим коллегам МФК, вместе с ними составили модель, да, это я, наверное, более подробно остановлюсь на если будет такая возможность на презентации, на слайдах. Но сегодня я должен, как в практике, я не мог это не сказать, вот сидят наши э, члены наблюдательного совета, независимые, и э, действительно очень сильно я на своей шкуре буквально э, чувствую, как поменялась э, работа и как поменялась в принципе корпоративного управления в банке. Если раньше ну, основные принципиальные вопросы принимались на уровне правления банка, то сегодня, да, и политика банка, и стратегия банка, и текущая деятельность банка по определенным вопросам в рамках полномочий, сегодня мы очень активно и тесно работаем с нашими представителями, независимыми представителями в Совете. Поэтому вам большое спасибо, и я думаю, и другие банки тоже сегодня работают с корпоративными изменениями в корпоративном управлении банка с наблюдательным советом. И да, у нас запланировано, что уже сегодня в Промстройбанке большинство членов – это независимые члены. То есть даже при рассмотрении того или иного вопроса, практического вопроса на практике, когда встает вопрос о голосовании, большинство голосов у нас будет за независимыми членами. Поэтому я думаю, все решения, которые принимаются нашим советом, и не только Промстройбанком, но и советами других банков, будут прежде всего направлены на выполнение принципов эффективности, целесообразности и минимизации рисков. Спасибо вам большое за вашу работу. You'll be ready for uh, an independent uh, chairman uh, soon in, uh, in the bank. So prepare for the chairman role, colleagues. Um, now, this rule number one, uh, really, of uh, any panel that stands between the audience and lunch is to try and finish on time. <laughs> so, uh, Abdullah, you wanted to comment maybe to Bruno's yeah, maybe question? Maybe just two words. Uh, uh, just I two words, and, and then we'll have to conclude. Merci. Uh, the, to, uh, I have a good news and bad news for you guys. The good news is... Um, Yes, your work is really appreciated by everyone. And uh, where, where we go when, when we see the, the independent uh, members of the supervisory board, it, it's called in, by the law, and uh, there's complete change. And the, the, the by quality, by the, the level of discussions, by all processes of rules, things, and it's really tremendous work. And thank you for, uh, the, the, for the job. Uh, the second is, we, yes, we want to uh, the, uh, enlarge the scale of this work, to do the same job with the other banks where still we don't have a really uh, independent supervisor board and we want to go on with, with that. But not only. The good thing is under the agency now it's going to be uh, created HR committee, uh, the, which this HR committee will be hiring the best specialists throughout the world uh, the, using the, the tremendous job done by the consulting group called Strikitsa Consulting. They have uh, in, interviewed Uh, and selected over a hundred the, the best specialists in the field, in different fields. So we will be hiring through them and through the HR body of the, under the agency, the, the specialists, and implementing them to the supervisor board and both of the, 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 both, uh, the, the executive board of, of the different agencies. But this is the end of the good news. And the bad news for you guys is you can't be paid uh, in, in more than two shareholder companies even if you will be running 10 businesses, just two of them will be paying you. Sorry mm. for that. <laughs> oh, well. I thought that uh, I was going to ask people to bring their resumes to you, but that was before the bad news. <laughs> <laughs>
I, I would like to really thank you very much. Thank I think you. this debate uh, also shows the lively uh, debate that exists in Uzbekistan around these issues, which is uh, also a far cry and a much better situation than, than back in 2016 when this, uh, this long journey started. <laughs> so please join thank me you. in giving a big round of applause to the panelists and enjoy your lunch. Thank you for coming.